All right, everybody, I'm GPEX Alarm 101. I've got a bit of a surprise for System Test 10. Two surprises. First one is that it's on the wall. Yeah, I got the panel on the wall. I've got the pull station on the wall. The only thing that's not on the wall right now is the alarm because I don't have a back box that works for it. But then there's wires going up there for something else. You'll see that. That's part of the second surprise. Anyway. So we'll look at the panel, see if anything's changed. Hopefully it doesn't go into alarm randomly like it just did. I've also got the serial monitor pull, pulled up. I thought I might mention that. The serial monitor is pulled up on my homemade computer. It works really well. There's a little keyboard and everything. Yeah, this is my homemade computer setup. So uh, as you can see, I've added a few wires. I've managed them well enough, I just don't have enough wire to actually like neatly like tuck them back in the corner and then have the, each individual strand going out. Relock Alarms does a very good job with his wiring. I try to, but as you can see, that doesn't turn out very well if you don't have enough wire or if you have too much. It makes it difficult sometimes. Also, I might mention, I'm going to do this now, signal coding menu has changed a little bit. As you can see, we have five options now instead of three. Well, five options instead of four because there was a hidden California code. But it goes like this. CF is California. Code three, continuous, sync mode, which is down there. And then march time is the select button. I've added march time. California code was there last time, as you saw. But um, I did uh, not update the display I have now. I've updated the display now, and I'm, I'm actually going to give you a hint as to what the, uh, the device high up on the wall is. It's almost like right at the ceiling. Listen carefully. Listen, did you hear that click? That's for the auxiliary power output. That must mean something. So, uh, you'll see what that is. I've never had one of these in the system before. I've never had one of these devices. Anyway, I've got the MT4 set to tone. Code 3, and the panel will be coding it to march time, or slow march time, really, but... Uh, yeah. Then I've got this here, and I put a label on there that says emergency use only. Disclaimer, without permission or certification, pulling the fire alarm is illegal. Dependent on the degree of tamper with the life safety system, GPEX Alarm Co. can legally fine you for up to $5,000 US dollars. Keep that in mind. I just keep that in here. Now, the device that I have in the system... Uh, you've probably guessed it now. It's not a notification appliance since it has auxiliary power. And it can't be a pull station. Otherwise it would probably be over there or by my light switch or maybe even out in the hallway or in the bathroom. But, so what I've got this chair for is, can't quite reach it. We're actually going to be activating the system with this. It's a smoke detector. I've got a smoke detector. And uh, this is an ESL 541 NB. It's an Interlogix detector, and you're kind of thinking, whoa, this is a strange Interlogix detector. I'm used to seeing the one with the sounder, the heat, and low temperature warning things, and it's usually wireless. But this time, I got a hardwired four-wire version. So, and it's wired into zone one, and has the auxiliary power, this wire here, going up into it. And, yeah, it's nice, so let's make sure it blinks. Cool thing about this one, normally they have a test button, but they've added a magnet test for the commercial style smoke detectors. It came in a weird box though. I got it from a not really a fire alarm seller kind of person, but yeah, it's a very nice detector. It has worked very well today. I won't be testing it with Solo because I don't have any more. I have C6, but I don't have any of this because I test the detectors at home with Solo. Those right there, the hardwired ones into our house. Those are SA720Bs, I think. Whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to test the detector. I'm going to hold this tablet in a weird way. 
So three, two, one. Now this blinks a couple times and that's to test the sensitivity. tell you to. There we go. Blink six times to test the sensitivity. And the MT is freaking loud. So... Now, I'll, sh I'll tell you what those blinks were. Whenever you test the detector, Interlogix does something really nice. They, e ESL does something really, really cool, or GE as well. But they do something really interesting that I've, this is the only detector I've really seen that on that, that does that automatic test function. Those blinks tell you how, how sensitive the detector is. Mine blinks six times. Four to seven is, is normal operation. Uh, two to three is means that the detector is dirty, and seven to eight means it's too sensitive and the detector is still dirty, causing that. And a one means that there's something wrong with the device and it needs to be replaced. Now this doesn't have the clean me function that puts a supervisory in the panel when that happens, but what this will do is it'll just let me know whenever I test it. So, and it does a functional test of the actual sensor. So, we'll reset the panel. So that's pretty neat. I've got a smoke detector in the system now. It's wired on the zone one, as I mentioned, which is down here. Those three, those three wires. Anyway, so uh, just for the fun of it, we will hit the pole station as well. Should have left the panel open. So evidently, it knows that that detector is sensitive, so I'll have to be careful with the popcorn. Because I actually set those off one time. These are photoelectric, but I think, I'm, I'm skeptical about that because I think they're ionization. There's a reason, because my shower steam sets it off, unless I have the bathroom fan on. Then it doesn't. There's the Gentex commanders down there. Now I also added a function to the panel of what I'm thinking I'm going to take away to add something else. I can't remember what I wanted to add though. Anyway, it says reset AUX power and that resets the detector. So, for example, if it's an alarm, it'll reset that detector up there. And, uh, yeah. I typically press and hold the reset button, by the way, until the LED goes out whenever the detector is activated. I'll activate it and then show you what I mean. So, uh, I'm going to support the camera to where you can see the detector, and I'm going to push and hold the test button until that light goes out, and then I will release the, the reset button on the control panel. So, give me a second. Okay, I'm just going to attempt to do this. And so I'm going to activate the detector. Just go up here. As you can see, this can be a pain in the butt sometimes. There we go. We'll silence that. We'll put the magnet down. And. Look at the LED because this takes a second or two to reset. So let's see if I can do this. There you go. 
I have to. I hold it until the uh, LED on the detector goes out. Usually, if the detector is activated, if the pulse station is activated, I know I'm good. <clears throat> but the detectors take a second to reset, so I'll 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 lengthen the delay in case it doesn't reset the detector correctly. But it gives it a good two to three seconds to reset, which for whatever reason it said it needed 25 seconds to reset in the manual. But kind of weird. Whatever. But anyway, that should be about system test 10. Now, the last thing I want to do, I'm sitting in my chair here. I want to give shout outs on this channel to people who have been active and awesome in the fire alarm community. And the first week I'm going to do, I'm going to do this every five system tests, but the first, for the first one I want to give this to S SER Safety. He's just been absolutely phenomenal in the fire alarm community. For a fairly young fire alarm enthusiast, like myself as well, I think he does an absolutely phenomenal job with his system tests. He finds time to do all that and still gets his stuff done that needs to be done. He doesn't make excuses, typically, and... He's just been an all-around enthusiastic fire alarm user. I like the fact that he's been able to keep his channel clean as well. He doesn't say bad words for the most part, probably. I don't know that for a fact, but he doesn't say them on his channel. He usually doesn't let others say them on his channel either. So he tries to keep it child-friendly. I mean, for me, that's kind of important. I mean, that pulls something out that he's actually trying to be sensible in the community. Instead of using profanity of all sorts, so... I'm a strong believer that profanity doesn't necessarily matter, but it matters to the people who actually think it's kind of irrational, and it is. So, profanity users, I'm not a big fan of you. <laughs> well, New Age Serval are maybe, but he doesn't use profanity too much, but <clears throat> I mean, you're, you're going to be used to hearing that. Anyway... Congratulations, SER Safety. You've done a great job with your channel, and it's just been absolutely inspiring to everybody around you. Exit Sign 250 has been inspired by that. I know that for a fact. You don't even have to ask him. And I'm sure hundreds of others, maybe thousands, have been also inspired by your channel. So thanks for doing what you do, and keep it up. Thanks, everybody. I'm GPEX Alarm 101, and I'll leave a link to SCR Safety's channel in the description. I will see you in the next system test, system test number 11.